Welcome back to this glorious evening here at Hamden Park. Nick Horland with Cedar Park, head coach of the Berlin Thunder. Peter, you've been here for the last two years. What is it like for these players and these coaches right now? It's a thrill, Nick. You know, whenever you get involved in athletics, you want to win. There are, very, there are an awful lot of people in this world that have played many years and never played in a championship game. Today is a very special day. It's a championship game. These guys are excited, yet at the same time, they're relaxed, and I'm sure we'll see a great, a great game. Well, the Frankfurt Galaxy have drawn first blood. They've won the toss. So that means that Todd France of the Ryan Fire will get World Bowl 11 underway. The man allocated here from the Minnesota Vikings. And the return men are that man there, Jonas Lewis. We will see a lot of him in the backfield. And the other guy back there is Brian McDonald, who is a dangerous slot receiver as well. The last World Bowl to be played here in Scotland, of course, was in 1996. Frankfurt fumbled that opening kickoff. The Scottish Claymores recovered, took it in for a touchdown, and never looked back. That's going to be a key, Nick, his turnovers. Always is in every single game. World Bowl 11 is underway. Brian McDonald fields the kick at his eight-yard line. He hurdles the first guy, works his blockers, gets it out to the 27-yard line. So a decent return from McDonald. Lavelle Boyd was there on the special team stop. But the Frankfurt Galaxy coming out with James Brown, the former Scottish Claymore, who had an up-and-down season. Five touchdowns, five interceptions needs a steady start here in what is a hostile stadium the scottish claymores fans feel that the frankfurt galaxy losing last week put them out of the world bowl they've all become ryan fire fans for the day brown will throw on first down and it's complete straight away to one of the dangers robert baker who picks up 14 yards before he's pushed out of bounds by tony lukins let's check out the offense in front of the frankfurt galaxy bruce moore jackson mitchell and rogers bruce and jackson both playing hurt both questionable whether they can go all the way today jonas lewis and corey mcintyre in the backfield baker and mark lester the wideouts josh whitman the tight end first down frankfurt at the 40 yard line three wide receivers in on first down and they'll go on the ground and lewis has got a big hole straight up the middle and still on his feet bouncing away from tacklers before greg brown brings him down 27 yards on the ground for frankfurt who have come out on fire here in hamden one of the things you mentioned early on nick was the fact that terence dukes was starting in the middle as a linebacker and it may take a little time for him to get used to it because here's a big play right up the middle and it took the safety man greg brown to come in there and stop it so two big plays already for the frankfurt galaxy one through the air one on the ground and brown will just swing it out Ooh. to robert gillespie who just took his eyes off the ball the mistake that they've all done in the past this ryan fire defense is banged up they lost a couple of starters last week andre arnold and derek ham outside on the uh, defensive line mckibben and harris inside but the big question is here terence jukes starting for the first time this season flanked by burton and smith tony lukins and teddy gaines on the corners abdul howard and greg brown the real strength of this team at safety but the big question is how does terence jukes hold up in his first start it is a big question they can they get to play well in the middle too mark lester was the motion man play action from brown and brown's put it upstairs and he had an open man in baker but just overthrew him in the sun that'll be incomplete and that'll be third down and ten Here's a big play right here, Nick. Anytime you can convert on third down, especially when you start to get on the plus side of the field, is extremely important. It's also important for the Ryan defense to set the tone and stop them here. Very interesting play coming up. Jonas Lewis, we saw there getting uh, a little bit of attention. Mark Suma, the Frenchman, the French wide receiver, he is dangerous. He's had a great year. His best year in three years in Frankfurt. Third and ten going from the shotgun brown feels some pressure steps up has a lot of time then runs into a whole bunch of trouble and they've swarmed all over him and brought him down after a three-yard gain everybody was in on that including chris ward who was playing for scotland this season but has been pressed into service for the rhine fire bastian lano was in on it too nowhere 
for James Brown to go. It is an interesting call right away. Oh, you yeah. Got, you got a 53-yard field goal attempt, plus you've got the NFL Europe four-point rule in effect here. It's a big play. This is John Hilbert, the former Dallas Cowboy, who's 5 for 13 this year. He's been all over the place, but he's got a great leg. Can he put four points on the board for Frankfurt here? Yes, he can. 53 yards. You, you know, Nick, as insignificant as it may sound, James, James Brown scrambling just for a couple of yards was very important. Yes, it's the Galaxy drawing first blood. Welcome back to World Bowl 11 at Hamden Park here in Glasgow. And the uh, pubs are probably empty around about now because there's a lot of interest in this game here in Glasgow. Peter, of course, has not been spending any time in the pubs in Glasgow. He's been preparing for this game, as indeed have the coaching staffs of these teams. Frankfurt won't be too unhappy at that. A 53-yard field goal to get things underway from a kicker who's been really up and down for them. That'll settle their nerves. I, I tell you, it was a big play for him. Anytime you can get some points on the board early, now you got the other team behind a little bit. Kendall Newson, who's back to return this kickoff, has been an exciting player all year long. This could be a big play. He's returned one for a touchdown. He led the league on kickoff and punt returns, but he's not going to do much with that. Taken seven yards deep. John Hilbert's kick giving Newson no chance. They don't want to put the ball in that guy's hands under any circumstances, but if you're going to do it, put it seven yards deep. Nowhere for him to go at all. So Nick Rolovich from the Denver Broncos comes out and leads the Ryan Fire offense just like James Brown just like all these quarterbacks here Rolovich has been up and down but then so too is this fella John Hilbert a very patchy regular season but he's made a very good start here now can the Ryan Fire respond they're not a good comeback team that's not their strength they certainly can't afford to go two scores down so the pressure on early here and Rolovich comes out throwing and they find Kendall Newsom on first down he's brought down by Chris Pointer after a gain of around eight yards. Efficient, but uh, hasn't exactly set the world on fire this year, Rolovich. No, we've talked about it a little bit earlier, Nick. All four quarterbacks have been exactly that efficient, and it's basically up to them to not to lose the game today. Let the other playmakers win it. Second down and short, and the fire come out with four wide receivers here. This flush formation. Yeah, I think, I think we're going to get a... I think if we'd look closely, Nick, we'd find out the officials might have missed one there. I thought there were 12 guys in the field. I may be wrong. Well, I, I think there were 12 people on that field. Well, let's check out the offense in front. Dwayne Ledford, Pratt Cymru, Dustin Keith, who's filled in very efficiently. Jim Jones and Patrick Vensky, the German former Jacksonville Jaguar. We do now have a flag down on the field. Denson in the backfield. Johnson, Newson, and Adams, I, the wideout. Dwayne Blake, I, I think the tight end. I think you'll discover, Nick, that that's exactly what it was. They had a, nobody go on the field, yet they had a player come off, and the officials found that there were 12 on that last play. Yeah, Peter Morelli. Oh, the, the, the initial uh, suggestion there was too many men on the field from the Frankfurt side. Let's see. Oh, it was. It was on Frankfurt. Yeah. Yeah, Frankfurt had 12 defenders. And still couldn't stop it. No, no. <laughs> good throw by Rolovich. And, that, and that's important for them to get off to a good start. Mike Jones, the offensive coordinator of the Ryan Fire. He's what? had a real headache this week, hasn't he? You, you can see he's a worried man. And this Frankfurt Galaxy defense is ranked number one, and with good reason. First down at their own 40-yard line. Rolovich will throw once again. This time they go the other way to Charlie Adams, their possession man. Yep, he is made immediately go. by Rashidi Barnes, who's had a terrific season. Just a couple of yards there. Let's check out this number one ranked Frankfurt defense. Number one overall and against the run. Evans, Almanzar, Gurley, and Schlecht up front. Those two tackles are huge and effective. The linebackers, Dustin Cohen and Idris Price, flank Fred Jones, who's had a terrific season playing the middle linebacker position for the first time ever. Cummings and Unertle, the corners, and Rashidi Barnes and Calvin Spears are the safeties. They'll go on the ground here with Denson, and he runs straight into Fred Jones and drags him forward for three yards. I, I think there's a little difference when you say Fred Jones is playing the middle for the first time this year. You're talking about season, season one. Yeah, the on, first, the other, yeah. on the other side of the ball, you've got Terrence Dukes, who's playing the middle for the first time in a game, yeah. and especially in a big game. And at the middle, if you're going to be successful, you need to run the football. And there you just saw uh, Fred Jones come up with a big play. No one has been able to run inside on the Frankfurt Galaxy this season. They lead the league in run defense by a long way. Less than 90 yards a game they've been conceding. 
I mean, it's all down to that triangle inside. Rolovic will try his arm on third and long with Charlie Adams, who tried to make a terrific catch over Chris Cummings, but couldn't bring it in, and it's incomplete. And fourth down, Ryan Fire. See, it's what we talked about earlier when Frankfurt had the opportunity to convert on third down, and they didn't. They at least gained a little bit of yards so that they could make the attempt at that uh, long field goal, which they made. Here, Ryan was unable to convert on third down, and they're going to have to punt it. Now it's up to their defense to stop Frankfurt. Jay Taylor, the punter, is on. He was dead last in NFL Europe, but he did down 15 of his punts inside the 20, which was equal first in the league. Robert Baker is the dangerous return man. Terrible high what snap, the... which Does a nice Taylor did a good, good, good job with. And uh, another one is fielded at the 15 and a six-yard return from Baker. So the defense, or the punting unit rather, did its job, but it's the Galaxy with the lead and with the football. Features of NFL Europe is that players and coaches wear mics for us. These are the guys who are wired for sound here in World Bowl 11. Peter Vars always wears a microphone for us TV guys. You're going in front of your face this time, which is slightly different. You always love wearing that mic, don't you? Well, one of the things the coaches always do is remind me my mother's listening. So it, <laughs> it puts a little caution in you. And don't forget today, Peter, they're going to hear every word you say. First down, Frankfurt with Jonas Lewis, who picks up another three yards inside. Jesse Warren, a former Berlin Thunder World Bowl winner on the stop. Second down and seven. So important that the fire don't let this one get away from them early. No, it's, it, what has to happen here is Ryan's got to come up with a big stop. Because you can tell just by the first play there, Frank was setting their mind to, we're going to run the ball and try to control this thing and make sure we don't create any big turnover. Second down and six. Brown with the handoff once again. Lewis spins away to the right-hand side and uh, gets himself a lot of room. After all, Howard coming up from the safety position, but seven more yards. And uh, Dwayne Painter, the offensive coordinator of the Frankfurt Galaxy, mixing things up. Yeah, yes, oh, there he goes. Yes, he... Uh, we got a little sound there. And yeah, yes, he did. And the thing that happened there is you saw Abdul Howard come up with a great hit from the secondary. Also, it was a cutback play that could have gone a long way. So Lewis gets Frankfurt another first down at their own 34. Play action. Brown will throw. And he's looked for Mark Lester, that big man from the Baltimore Ravens who had a huge game against the Scottish Claymores in Frankfurt working on Tony Lukins. I, I, I tell you right there, there's a, a good example of games being won and games being lost. Mark Met Lester just makes a big catch when actually simultaneously both Lester and Lukens had the ball. If Lukens comes down with it, it's an interception. Instead, it's a completion of the change move. Both these guys making an impact already here, Lester and Baker. Oh, certainly. They both had big games against the Ryan Fire in the regular season, and here's Lester, the motion man, on first down. Back on the ground they go. Jonas Lewis and Lewis spinning away from tacklers and picking up four yards. It's one of the features for me this year of the Ryan Fire. They don't tackle as well as we've seen Ryan Fire teams. You, in the you know, you just noticed the same thing. I just mentioned Abdul Howard a second ago. That comes up, makes a big play. Here they send him on a blitz. He's got a chance for a five-yard loss. Misses a tackle and it becomes a five-yard gain. Most uncharacteristic of the Ryan Fire. Charles Burton we see in the thick of the action as well. He has a groin injury. They're not sure how long he's going to go either. A lot of banged up fire defensive players. Whitman is the motion man. Second down. Brown will throw once again, and he's got a wide open Mark Lester who just span away from Teddy Gaines for extra yardage. And Burton had to hustle over there and push him out of bounds. And Nick, you had just mentioned at the play before about how tackling wasn't very good. I happen to think Teddy Gaines is one of the better corners in this league. Here he's got a chance to make a play in front of him, misses the tackle, and it goes for an extra bunch of yards before they is run out of bounds. So the Galaxy rocking and rolling here in the first quarter of World Bowl 11. Knocking on the door again. They lead courtesy of that 53-yard field goal by four points. Lewis looking to get some inside yardage. Again, just bouncing away from the first tackler and falling forwards. Burton again in on the stop there. Burton is... Uh, 
going to be feeling sore at the end of this game for certain. But again, Lewis was able to get something extra going there. He, he, he did. He kept his legs churning, had good body lean, and he was able to pick up four after the initial hit. This is usually where a typical Ryan Fire team will stiffen. When you start getting down close, they usually play pretty good red zone defense. Yeah, they rank number one in the red zone defensively as Burton takes a breather on the sideline. Second down and seven. Brown looking to throw, but the pressure came, and he just had to get rid of it. Pressure coming from Chris Ward and Andre Arnold. He was looking for Matt Stanley, the big fullback, but it's incomplete. Too often, Nick, people use the phrase big play when it's a 50-yard gain. Right there on uh, James Brown's part, that was a big play to get rid of the football, to avoid the loss, to avoid the sack, to keep him in field goal range in case they don't convert here on third down. Well, it's a 47-48 yard kick for Doug Graber's guys from here. So Hilbert, Hilbert can make that. But you know Graber will be looking for the end zone. Brown with a deep drop. Puts it upstairs for McDonald. And it's incomplete. Ooh. Now the flag comes in. And will it be thrown on Lemuel Ligon? There was certainly some contact there. And the fire... But Brian McDonald had done a great job in getting himself open. And it did look like he got tackled before the ball got there. Probably a very good call. It goes against the Ryan Fire. number 20, on the defense, in the end zone. It is the man from the San Diego Chargers. Big first down. We, we had touched on it earlier that, you know, not only is the conversion an important part, yeah, you see him just get beaten, and in the last attempt, he makes an effort to disrupt the play and was unsuccessful. So first and goal after the flag for Brown and the Galaxy as Dickerson goes in motion. They'll give it to Jonas Lewis, who just scampers in untouched. And another very offensive-minded drive from the Frankfurt Galaxy, this time for six points. Touchdown, Frankfurt. You, you had mentioned earlier, Nick, that Dwayne Painter's doing a great job. You can tell he's in a rhythm right now, where they're throwing it, they're play action, play action throwing it, they're running it, they're countering it, they're doing a lot of positive things offensively, and they've got that Ryan Fire defense off balance right now. The, the other thing that's important in any of these games is breaks. It's Ralph Kleinman and, and playing in his fifth World Bowl, tacks on the extra point. He, he's done a great job. And, and penalties for you and against you can be breaks, too. There, the Ryan Fire self-destructed a little bit. Uh, hey, he gave it an effort. you got to appreciate that. He worked hard. This wonderful sunny day here in Glasgow, Scotland. And I'll tell you what, the sun is certainly shining on the Frankfurt Galaxy here in World Bowl 11. Jonas Lewis going in untouched just a few moments ago from a yard out, the former San Francisco 49er. And the story for the Galaxy so far, two possessions, two touchdowns, no big plays defensively from the right fire. No, in fact, the one big play defensively was a negative one. The pass interference on L Ligon down there on the one-yard line that set up that last score. When I say and two touchdowns, because I meant two scores. Two I mean, scores, yeah, right. we had the long field goal, and uh, it's looking pretty good for the Frankfurt Galaxy early. And the difficult part of it, Nick, as we well know, the Ryan Fire historically has not been a big come-from-behind team. This possession right now is very important that they get some kind of points on the board to keep it within one score. And that fellow there is the gunner on this Frankfurt Galaxy special teams unit, Hugo Lira, the Mexican. He's a real flyer. He's a great young man. We had him in training camp. Great young man. John Hilbert, who started this thing off, kicks it to Autry Denson from the Detroit Lions, who fields it inside his five. How the Ryan Fryer would like a return. They're not going to get much of one there. You, you know, Nick, we ended the season by playing Frankfurt a week ago. And in studying them, you could see they were playing faster and faster and faster. And as you watch this game right now, they're playing with a lot of confidence. Ryan needs something good to happen for them to uh, get a little bit of motivation back, get a little momentum going. Yes, three and uh, three and out, I think it was. Or did they get a first down? Whatever. They didn't do much on their opening possession offensively. And it's tough to know where the holes are with the Frankfurt Galaxy. The number one against the run but they also have the most turnovers, the most interceptions as well. So pick your poison. Movement at the line of scrimmage, flags all over the place. Certainly big Luis Almanzar moved, but whether they're going to call his number, we'll have to wait and see. What one of the things that you want to do as a quarterback is establish some kind of rhythm. And I, I believe you'll find Nick Rolovich used the long count. And... 
was a, nice, minus that, as a, result. That, that was a ni nice little ploy by the quarterback there to change the cadence, change the starting count, get the defense to jump, and now you've got a situation where it's going to be first and five. And those three guys inside, Jones, Jim, Keith, and Crummy, will have to enforce the peace against Al Manzar and Buck Gurley and the rest of those Frankfurt Galaxy defensive players. They'll go on the ground on second down and trying to work behind the peacekeepers, but not getting an awful lot was Frank Moreau, Jones and Banetka on the stop. We talked about this triangle for the Frankfurt Galaxy. Those big guys up front, Luis Almanza and Buck Gurley with Fred Jones behind him. It's kind of like what the Baltimore Ravens do with Ray Lewis working behind Sam Adams and uh, Siragusa. These guys aren't in that league, but the principle is the same. Exactly. And it's a, it, this isn't the Baltimore Ravens. This exactly. is NFL Europe. Yep. These guys are aspiring to get there. And if they keep playing the way they have this year, they've got a great shot at it. Moreau got enough for a first down, so they'll stay on the ground, and Big Frank powers his way for extra yardage. This is what they needed, the right fire. Chris Young eventually on the stop, and Moreau is a real power back rather than the, the, the scat back of Denson, and maybe Peter Harchek has thought, right, if we're going to get it done on the ground, it's the big fella. Well, one of the things that has been a concern of the Ryan Fire people and fans is they have not been able to run the ball very well against Frankfurt all season long. Here they've come out, and now they're trying to establish the run a little bit, and if they can do that, it'll open up the passing game. Yes, Moreau was held to 2.3 yards a carry in two games against the Ryan Fire, against the Frankfurt Galaxy, excuse me, and that's more like it. That's that swarming Galaxy defensive front that we've seen all season. Jones and Benetka combining on the stop. This Daniel Benetka has really come on strong, the German, in the second half of the season. He, he has. He's done very well. He's, he's an old veteran of NFL Europe, a uh, national player, a sign that our national program is getting better and better because he's been in a couple of training camps. I think he was with the Patriots last July. He certainly bounced around a few places. And he may get another look this season as well. Second down and 10. No gain on the play for the Ryan Fire. Struggling to get something going offensively. And it's tough inside. They're still trying to stay with it. Three yards there. Three tough yards for Frank Moreau. The guy who backed up Priest Holmes in Kansas City a year or two ago. The... Uh they are. They're sticking to their game plan right now. They've got to establish a little bit of the run. They've got to soften them up a little. But they also got to keep them off balance. But this is going the yeah, hard way, isn't it? Who's that there in the middle? Was that Gurley? Looked like he did a nice job of stopping the ball in the inside there. So third down and long. The Ryan Fire trying to get something yep, here going. Here they come. Coming with six. They got to throw it hot. And they got hit a hot receiver. And this is a big play, a huge play for the Ryan Fire. Eventually, out of bounds goes Todd Elstrom, pushed out by Jeremy Unertle. But Elstrom, the former Barcelona Dragon, making only his fourth catch as a Ryan Fire player, but it's his biggest. One of the things people always want you to do is be aggressive. Well, sometimes when you're aggressive and the other team can counter, it can be a big play. That time Frankfurt came with six, tried to put pressure on Rolovich up the middle, and he got rid of it hot, dumps it off here to Elstrom, and then Elstrom breaks a little bit of a tackle. But when everybody's playing man-to-man -man defense and your guy misses you, there you go. Good for 34 yards. More importantly, it keeps that drive alive. It's first down for the Ryan Fire. Moreau trying to make it happen inside. It's going to be a long afternoon for Frank Moreau if he's asked to do a lot of that. Price and Evans combining. Don't be surprised here, Nick, if you see the Ryan Fire run it for the next two plays. As we talked about at the start of this drive, they need to come away with some points. And they're certainly in within field goal range right now. And they could be a little bit conservative just so the game doesn't get away from them. Be interesting to see what Mike Jones calls here. Second down and nine after the one-yard gain for Moreau. Rolovic will pass. And then he steps up and then is crunched from behind. Big Luis Almanza. Uh, obviously, it was a good decision on Nick Rolovich's part. He didn't have anybody open. You don't want to take the sack. He tried to get it back to the line of scrimmage to enable them, if they don't get anything, to kick that field goal. What about this guy going back to Seattle? He, he's had a good season. He, he goes back with his stock in hand. You, you know, one of the things that happens in NFL Europe, it's not so much what you do over here. How do you take the experience to the next place you go? Can Lewis take it back to Seattle and make sure that he practices well and does those things well? 
So another big third down. Loss of a yard, third and ten. They went to Elstrom last time. They've got the four wide receivers out again. And the pressure coming, and Rolovic just had to get rid of it. Because Chris Cummings was coming on the blitz, and it's incomplete. Not only was Chris Cummings coming on the blitz, but the little swing outlet to the back that they had was covered. Rolovic did a great job of throwing it away. So he doesn't take the sack, so he doesn't throw the interception. And now we've got a field goal attempt to get the game within one score again. And that's really what Ryan needed to do in this series. Todd France, the Minnesota Vikings man, four of eight on the year, but has a great leg. His longest this season, 53 yards. This won't be that long. This will be 39 yards, maybe 40 from where they've spotted it. Could it put the fire on the board? It looks good. It's certainly long enough. And it is three points to the Ryan Fire. They needed it. Yes, they America. are alive here in World Bowl 11. It's 11-3, Frankfurt over the fire. Welcome back, Frankfurt Galaxy, Quinn Gray. You were talking about Peter. He goes back to Jacksonville, and, and, and he's almost an enigma. When he does things well, he really does look the part. But his mechanics are sometimes so awful, they really do let him down. You just don't know what you're going to get. Well, and the tough part, Nick, is when you're playing a season, you can't revamp your mechanics. You have to go basically with what's natural to you. I'm sure Dwayne Painter and the other Frankfurt coaches have been talking to Quinn about drills he should do, things he should work on. And if he's a disciplined enough young man to go back and over this next month do it, and make himself a consistent thrower and a smart quarterback, then he's got a great chance in Jacksonville come July. But this next month, when he's by himself, is extremely important to his career. Well, the fourth of the fourth four quarterbacks that we've talked about now takes the field. Chris Bryson, who was drafted by the Cardinals in 1999 and was with them for three years. He's had his moments here in NFL Europe, but just like all the other quarterbacks in this game, not consistent. Well, he's got a man there on first down, but uh, what do you make of Chris Grison from what you've seen of him so far? You know, Chris, Chris Grison has done a decent job, but I don't know if Chris Grison has the physical talent that you need to have to stay in the NFL. NFL people are looking for big arms that are accurate. Sometimes you can buy with be just being accurate, but you need a big arm. I'm not sure Chris's arm is totally strong enough, but he's played well here this year, and that's what's important today. Should be good enough to get him another look in an NFL camp. He is here as a free agent after those three years in Arizona. You would think he'd get snapped up by somebody. I think you're seeing a veteran out there now changing the plays at the line of scrimmage. On second down, the pump fake. Then he puts it upstairs for the dangerous Kendall Newsom. There was a bit of contact there, but it was more Newsom running into Chris Pointer than anything. And there are no flags, no complaints. And that's going to bring up third down. We had talked earlier in the program about corner being a weak position. Generally speaking, in this league, if you can throw the ball short a couple of times, then you need to take a shot at going deep someplace along the line, and especially with a big play guy like Kendall Newsom. I think that's what Chris did at the line of scrimmage. That's Bryson is in. Rolovich looks on. That's what we expected from both these two teams in this game, that one quarterback would have the first quarter, the second one would have the second quarter, and then both of them have said, we're going to go with a hot hand after that. And there's a hot catch by the Ryan Fire. Not only was it a great catch, Nick, but I think you saw something for a historical making moment there. It's the first time I can ever re remember the Ryan Fire playing with no backs. Emmett Johnson did a nice job. Because that ball was behind him a little bit. He reached back, turned his shoulders, and made the catch. But for the Ryan Fire to come out with no backs, Whitey Jordans might not be having as much influence as we once thought. He's a three tight end, two back guy. <laughs> he certainly is. But they said that they, they could see the man from Seattle becoming a, a big part of this game. And again, there's that flush formation, the four wide receivers, and they're going to run out of it, or they're going to try to with Autry Denson, who is strung out, spun out, picks up maybe a yard before he was converged on. Still can't run effectively. Well, and, and it's, it's, they're testing the Frankfurt defense. One of the things that I know going into the game against Frankfurt is you take a look at their personnel. You know they're strong up front. You know they're strong at linebacker. They've got good safeties. Uh, and they've got corners that are a little suspect. So Denson looking yep. for somewhere to go. Chris, Chris Cummings coming up from the secondary position. So a gain of a yard for the man from Detroit. Brings up second down and long. Play action. Bryson with a lot of time but can't find a man. They were looking for Lavelle Boyd. It's incomplete. What Ryan is trying to do here, Nick, is they're trying to spread them out, get the nickel and dime people. By that, I mean extra defensive backs on the field, people that may not be as talented as the linebackers that Frankfurt has so that they can get a physical advantage and uh, then run the ball or then throw it go, uh, with go. their good receivers against the weaker Let's defensive backs. Zero, pass, 50, throw, come back, one, one, We've got a comeback coming here to a receiver. 
He'll run down and then come back towards the quarterback to catch the ball. Third down and nine. The fire in Frankfurt territory. More play action. And he's hit from behind as he throws. And it actually hit the referee, but it certainly wasn't going to be going anywhere. Denson had Fred Jones draped around him. Like a sheet. Joey Evans was in on the, uh, on the hit. Joey Evans is one of the better defensive ends in this league. He's had a great season. And one of the things that Chris did there was just get rid of it quickly. They had comeback called, and they came out with a too deep zone coverage with everybody underneath playing man-to-man, -man, which is generally the most difficult pass defense to throw it against. And I believe that's the first time Franklin has shown it today. So Jay Taylor on punting duty once again. Robert Taylor waits at his own 10-yard line, and there was a high snap before, and this is another disaster on special teams, and Taylor can't even get it. And he's pushed out, but they do manage to recover it. But Joey Evans again, first man there. We thought the one place that the Ryan Fire would have the edge in this game was special teams. Uh-uh. Well, snapper. It's a, it's a very, very critical spot. Too often we neglect it, but that's very, very important that you get a good long snapper, and that was just a bad snap. Well, the, the warning sign was there earlier as well. But Taylor this time, no chance with that. No, he didn't have a chance at all. The best thing he had to do at that point in time was try to pick it up rather than trying to make something happen. Josh McKibben is the long snapper. I know, this, this, is a, this is a critical series here for Ryan to stay in this game. They need to stop him. Big Werner Hippler checks into the game as a blocking fullback for Jonas Lewis, and Lewis spins away from Abdul Howard, but Howard this time hangs on, no gain. That's the kind of Ryan Fire defense you look, at, you look to see on a more consistent basis. Not only was Abdul Howard there, but there were four or five other Ryan Fire players around that ball too. And that's always been characteristic of a Pete Kaharczyk defense. A lot of people around the football playing with a lot of aggressiveness. And this is the part of the field where they're at their best as well, in their own red zone, and Big Werner checking in. I don't think there's anybody in the game would want to try and block that guy one-on-one. -on -one. He really is a load. Quinn Gray is hit from behind, throws it away. He didn't throw it away. He was looking for a man. I did him a, dis a dis disrespect there. He was looking for Robert Baker all the way. I'm sure right now Dwayne Painter and Doug Graver are breathing a sigh of release. relief. Those are the kind of things quarterbacks have to learn. At that point in time, taking a sack on the 20-yard line is a heck of a lot better than forcing an interception someplace. Because on the 20, you can still kick the field goal. And those are the thoughts that have to go through a quarterback's mind as that ball is happening, as the play is going on. Baker almost getting it there. Lukins with the attention, so that brings up third down and ten. And Gray will go from the shotgun this time. And flags coming. There was definitely some movement at the line of scrimmage before that ball was snapped, and it may have been the left tackle. I, I believe it was David Bruce uh, jumped a little bit early. It is loud here. It's you know as it is in most NFL Europe stadiums, and sometimes you can't hear, especially when you're in the shotgun. Third down. So it does indeed go against the Frankfurt Galaxy, and so far they're standing firm here, the Ryan Five, but it's still third down. It's third down. Don't be surprised to see a draw here. You've had a couple of shaky plays. Time to sell your offense down. Be satisfied with the field goal. Go up by two scores. Be interesting to see what happens. Don't be surprised if it's quarterback draw. Gray from the shotgun. It's not the draw, it's the pass, and it's the touchdown. Frankfurt Galaxy. Look at that. that was Mark great, Lester. That was a great throw, Nick. He put that ball up there with touch, put it over the defensive back's head, and uh, Lester makes a nice, nice catch in the end zone. That, that one's going to hurt Frankfurt. I mean, excuse me, hurt Ryan. Big play for the Frankfurt. And it all started with a bad snap from center. Kicking game is critical. Yeah, it's cost him. It's cost him big. And for a, such a big man, Mark Lester, 6'4", he's 86. got great hands. He really has lovely soft hands there. But as you say, the uh, the throw was perfect. Ralph Kleinman playing in his fifth World Bowl. Tacks on the extra point. And the gap between the two teams grows. It's now 18-3. to Mark Lester from Quinn Gray. The turnover was indeed huge. This is the dynamic duo that's given the Frankfurt Galaxy a 15-point advantage. Mark Lester from Queen Gray. And I think you're going to notice here the opposite of what happened in the last third down situation. Quinn Gray sets his feet, puts a nice touch on the ball, ball, and Mark Lester comes down with a big catch. Put him up to 18-3. To I just wondered who's uh, nudged me in the back there. Peter and I look around and it's Commissioner Paul Tagliabue coming up to... Uh, Talk to uh, one of our radio partners. Commissioner Tagliabue and Carl Peterson, the president of the Kansas City Chiefs, is with him, I believe. We'll let him off then, eh? Hey? <laughs> Here's John Hilbert with that strong leg. Denson 
and Newsom with the return. Newsom fielding at the 10, looking for somewhere to go, but these coverage units of the Galaxy very sound in this game so far. There's any, nowhere any, for him to go. Anytime you can keep that return inside the 30-yard line, you're doing well, and Frankfurt did a nice job right there. They certainly have contained Newsom very well all day. What about this guy? Has he got a chance as we just take, uh, take a look at Chris Grice? And yeah, Lester yep. goes back to Baltimore. He, he, big physical guy. He's proven he can catch the football and make plays. He has a very, very good chance. And the thing about it is if it's not with Baltimore, you never can tell. It might end up being with somebody else. But he's impressed some people. There's 32 teams watch game film of every game here in NFL Europe. They're all looking for somebody. Frank Moreau is looking to get himself back in the league after being with Kansas City for a year. And then Jacksonville for a year. Daniel Benetka on the stop. The very simple off-tackle running play, Nick, but it was a play to settle the Ryan fired down. They need to have some positive things happen, even if it's just a couple of first downs and then punt it, because this game has a long way to go yet, and they have to get back into it slowly. You don't do it with one play. Good call by Mike Jones. Let's go, Liz! Liz! Second down and long. More play action. Gryson feels some heat, manages to get rid of it and find Chad Mustard, one of those big tight ends that they've got. And it's a first down for the Ryan Fire. Chris Pointer on the stop. These tight ends for the Ryan Fire, physically they've got all the tools, but uh, Mike Jones has seemed to be reluctant to use them this season. Well, it, it, it hasn't been a typical Ryan team. You're right. They play with more four wides than they have in other years. Whether it's the way Mike's philosophy is or whether it's the performance of the players, I wouldn't know that at this point in time. But I like the call there, a little naked play where they dump it off to the tight end and get themselves a first down. First down. The Ryan Fire looking to get themselves back into this game. And it's Frank Moreau that's looking to do it for him. Spinning away from Rashidi Barnes for extra yardage. And another Frank Fire, rather Ryan Fire first down. This time on the ground, Barnes and Unertel eventually on the stop. And one of the things that Ryan's doing is they're putting pressure on the Frankfurt safeties. Calvin Spears had to come up at that point in time and really didn't make the play at five yards, so we get a 10-yard gain. And here's a bunch of guys that have played their football in Europe. Venski and Lano for the Ryan Fire. Mark Suma and Daniel Benetka for Frankfurt all contributing. But Lano had a great year. He, he had had a great year and Mark Suma from France has really come on as a wide receiver this year too. Let's go, You've got a wide receiver in uh, Berlin, Jörg Heckenbach. Who's Jörg Heckenbach's had a fine career for us. Great hands. Here's Big Frank starting to uh, get it going inside. Eight yards there. Fr Fr Frank just looked on that run like he's running with a little bit of intensity. He came off the ball pretty well. Not only did he break a tackle or two, but he leaned forward and fell forward. So now we got a second and two. A play call is dream. He can do most anything he wants at this point in time. I would tend to guess Mike's probably going to go for a first down again, though. You, you don't want to come up with third and two. So I, I, would not, I would be surprised if he does not run the ball here. Let's go, rear fifth set! Second down and a couple as the four wide receiver package out once again, but they do run out of it once again, just as you thought they would, and it's good for four yards. So they've just got the Galaxy guessing a little bit here. Joey Evans eventually on the stop. That flush formation, those four wide receivers. And Mike Jones did say, we will run out of that. He's not kidding. Well, one of the things that you do when you do it is you set the tone. When people see it, they say, uh oh, here comes pass. Well, you've got to keep him off balance a little bit, and you do need to run it. Mike did a great job there. The Frankfurt's starting to come down with one of their safeties from one of the sides to get more people in the box or in the line of scrimmage area to slow that run down. So we're going to have to see Ryan throw it a little bit here, I think. Go, Liz, Liz, set. Less than seven minutes to go in the first half. 18 to three in favor of the Galaxy, but the Fire trying to do something about that. And once again, they've got big Chad Mustard, and he's spinning away from tacklers. And I, I think we picked another up another 11 yards. Down. Picked up another first down. We've got the ball on the 20-yard line. Now we're going to have to find out, can Frankfurt stop them when they get in the red zone? This is very important for the Ryan Fire, too, to come away with some points. More more Doesn't necessarily well, have to be. have a higher chance to make it to the NFL because, you know, they grew up and they have, um, they have heroes in the NFL Europe. They see they see uh, Patrick Benskin, see the Werner Hipplers of this world. Uh, they see great nationals who actually have a chance of making it to the LCA. So, therefore, it is a career path, you know, when I started seven or even ten years ago, there was nobody I could, I could look up to. There was nobody who could offer me any kind of advice. But now with the great job by the NFL and the NFL Europe, football become a more global sport. Now you can compete for Team Europe. And all of a sudden you fly to the States and you compete against American kids and you can show that you are on a global level one of the best players in the world. Well, Patrick Vensky, who was active with the Jacksonville Jaguars a couple of years ago, really has flown the flag for European players throughout 
the world well, for, for, for giving him a chance to get into the NFL because he's been there and he's done it and he's hoping to get back there. I thought one of the key words he used is gave him an opportunity to compete. When you compete, you find out how good you are against some of the best players. And of course, Werner Hippler of Frankfurt was on the practice squad of San Diego a couple of years ago, so that German flag has been flown in the NFL. Here's Grison trying to fight find someone in the end zone and he just has to put it upstairs Newson had double coverage they were converging on Grison and John Schlecht has come straight off the field injured Nick right there was in a, was a play of uh, experience early in the year in the first quarter Ryan is down in the Barcelona red zone they roll out throw the ball back against the grain have it intercepted here you notice there wasn't anybody open Grison threw the football away good decision because even a field goal here is very very important to the psyche for Ryan Fire Yep, second down and ten. At the ten-yard line. They go on the ground with Denson. Denson gets inside the five to the three before he's brought down. That's going to bring up third down and goal from inside the five. You know, for, as a coach, I hate this call. Do you run it? Do you throw it? Do you, you do it? What, do you, what, what, do you, what decision do you make? Right now, I'm glad Mike's making the call. Mike Jones is making the call rather than we are. Yeah, it's a long three as well. It's it interesting is. to see them mixing and matching their uh, running backs as well. The Ryan Fire, bit of Denson, bit of Moreau, anything to just try and uh, get this Frankfurt Galaxy defense out of its rhythm. Big play coming up here. Third down and goal for the Fire. Grison drops, has a lot of time. Still looking, still can't find anybody. The coverage is just terrific. Now he's running for his life, and he's down. And there was just nowhere for Chris Grison to go. Joey Evans eventually got him. As soon as I make the statement a couple of plays ago, how he threw the football away, it comes back to haunt him here. Fortunately, they're in a position where he can afford to take the sack, but at the same point in time, probably should have thrown it away so we'd have had a little bit closer field goal attempt. Big kick coming up, though. Yeah, he didn't turn the ball over. He didn't throw it up for an interception, but as you say, and nowhere to go except down. So that sends out Ingo Anderbrugger, the former soccer player, to attempt a 29-yard field goal. This is a, a long for him if he makes it, and he does. You know, In Ingo's been a very pleasant surprise this year. He's done a great job. That's another three points for the Ryan Fire. They've reduced the deficit to just 12. Welcome back to Ryan Fire settling for a field goal. Chris Grison trying to find someone in the end zone, but in the end, Joey Evans of the Frankfurt Galaxy found him. Grison went down, as a lot of people do when Joey Evans finds you. The result, another three points. Jo Joey Evans is as impressive defensive lineman as we faced this year. I thought he was a very, very good player. Plays with an awful lot of intensity, has good quickness to go along with some decent size. And he became a marked man very early after a couple of good games. I think he had five sacks. So he, he, he sent the warning signs out there and everybody knew he was coming, but he still made plays after that. That's the sign of a player that's got something because people adjusted to him. Absolutely. He's played hard and he's played well. Yeah, that was an important field goal for the Ryan Fire. There are only two scores, two touchdowns down. So you're still in the football game. I mean, and plus, it's a momentum builder for him. It gives him back some confidence. Yeah, they need to think in those terms as well. That, they don't want to start thinking, oh, we're behind, we've got to make something happen. There's still a lot of time in this ball game. What they need now is a defensive stand. Well, first of all, they need a, a special team stand of some sort. Brian McDonald fields inside his own five-yard line. Looks to go straight up the middle and he's just chopped down at the 21. That was uh, Audrey Denson, I think, hustling away on special teams there. That, that was a great play by the Ryan Fire cover team there. They held Frankfurt down inside the 20. Now, if you can get an exchange of punts or a, make them punt and get the ball around midfield, you still have time before the half is over to put some more points on the board. Big series right here for the Ryan Fire. And Quinn Gray, as we've said, is he, erratic and he's up and down. Well, his last two throws that I'm aware of, one's a great throw as a touchdown, the other's a wide-open throw on third down that he misses by three That's yards. Right. Who knows what's going to come next? They're going to play it safe. Stay on the ground with Jonas Lewis, who's had a very effective first half, and this is probably his best run of the first half as well. He's still going, and they just can't get him until Abdul Howard eventually brings him down. He was out running linebackers. He had Dukes and Krager chasing him. They couldn't get him. Great, great effort by Abdul Howard, because he had to change direction and go make the play. 44 yards on the run for Jonas Lewis. Yeah, the, the, uh, he does a nice job. He's got some nice vision, makes a nice cut there to his right past Greg Brown. And then you see uh, Dukes chasing him down, but Abdul Howard's there to make a play. And uh, it's an important play, but at the same point in time, was a lot of yards to give up. Puts Frankfurt in a position to get some points on themselves. 
Well, you said it was an important defensive stand. That's not how they wanted to start it, the fire. Gray with the swing pass to Robert Gillespie. Gillespie's got a lot of space to work in as well, and he'll pick up eight yards. There was a lot of daylight ahead of Gillespie there when he got that ball. And, and you know something, though, Nick, and I know I'm being overly critical here as a, as a coach, and specifically as a quarterback coach, but Quinn Gray throws that ball behind him. If he threw it out in front of him, where well, that yes. guy could have just dotted up that seam, you're right, we might have seen the uh, Frankfurt Galaxy put another touchdown on the board. That's where a quarterback needs to be very, very accurate. Because you're seeing holes in the Ryan Fire defense that you haven't seen in years gone by. Gray with the handoff. Gillespie finds himself another one of those big holes. Dances past Abdul Howard like he wasn't there and goes in untouched. Touchdown, Frankfurt. It can't get much easier than that. You know, Gillespie's an example of what this league is all about, too. I may be mistaken here, Nick, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't Gillespie a wide receiver in college? I think, I think he's a position change guy. He's had an opportunity to have some plays as a running back and prove that he might be, be able to make himself uh, a future as a third down back in the National Football League. Played under Steve Spurrier, of course. And uh, that's where he's going back to, Washington. So... Uh, He'll be telling his coach, hey, yeah, I can play this position. You know, that, that's always a plus, to, to play for a guy or with people that have an awful lot of faith in what you can do. 28 yards for Robert Gillespie, the third back in this offensive backfield of the Frankfurt Galaxy. We've seen a lot of Jonas Lewis. We haven't seen Adam Tate much today, but now we're seeing Robert Gillespie. And the reason we saw Robert Gillespie, I think, is because Jonas Lewis was tired from the long run. He had a couple plays before that. Isn't that a sick enough for Pete Gaharchek and his defense? Jonas Lewis checks out, Gillespie checks in, and Pete Gaharchek is saying, what do we do to make a stand here defensively? Uh, and, and you know something, though? No, Pete understands it because he has the same thing on his side of the ball. Archie Denson and Frank Moreau are very, very good players. You're seeing some frustration here now. You really are. Bastian Lano with his head down, middle of the picture there. Brad Harris. Some of these fans are pretty happy, though, of and, course. And, and, and now it becomes Pete's job and the other assistant coaches to rally him. Many teams have come down from three, uh, come back from three scores before, especially at halftime. Heck, we got behind Frankfurt 35 to nothing at the end of the first quarter when we played him the first game, and we, we lost the game, but we came back to make it a game. But I wonder how damaging that last series was psychologically. They were gashed on two big runs. It took them no time at all, the Galaxy, to march down the field. All right, now you look at the positive side of that. It took him so little time. That gave Ryan enough time to have some time here in the second quarter to uh, make something go, ha make something happen themselves. Pick the ball up. Here we go. Dancing. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, dancing yep. along the sidelines and eventually paying the price. I think Denson was hoping that ball would go out of bounds. It didn't. We do have a flag down. And where the flag is thrown, Nick, it looks like it's probably the kicking team offside. This is an interesting call. How much confidence do you ha have in your kickoff return team. Do you want Archie Denson or Kendall Newson to return it again, or do you take the ball at the 32-yard line with two minutes to go? It's a re-kick. Well, see, and, and that's the decision Pete Karchik had to make. He's got two great returners. Uh, Kendall Newson's already returned one this year for a touchdown. Maybe this is an opportunity to create a big play through special teams, and they'll take that seven or ten seconds off the clock as opposed to taking the ball at the 30-yard line. So we'll see what kind of penalty this is. Can they get it out past the 31 now? It's a very pro Ryan firehouse here in Hamden. As we explained earlier, the, the Frankfurt Galaxy seen as the villains for losing in Berlin last week, a result that eliminated Scotland from World Bowl contention. So uh, Claymore's fans and neutrals have become Ryan Fire fans for the day, and uh, it's not been their day so far. Well, Nick, I will tell you I've appreciated you standing by my side because people have been throwing things at myself too because that was a Berlin Thunder team that beat Frankfurt. That's right. Scotland didn't get in there, so it, it has been a little bit of a challenge to walk through the crowd on a couple of occasions. I've had accusatory fingers pointed at me. Well, it's not your fault that uh, you get the win. <laughs> I think I, I've heard some people say, yeah, Scotland deserve to be here, and, and they're right. Scotland do deserve to be here in the, in the sense that they're probably the best team in the league, but if you lose four games and you lose the tiebreakers, tough, you're out. I love the expression, is this a big game? They're all big games. Newson feels it on the run at the 15. Now, he can be so dangerous, and he's chopped down at the 42. I thought he was going to actually uh, get something really good going there. Idris Price. It, it became about a 12 or a 13-yard penalty acceptance for uh, the Ryan Fire there. 
So we are at the two-minute warning. The Galaxy leading the fire 25 to 6 here in World Bowl 11. Welcome back. The World Bowl trophy will be going to one of these two teams for a record third time. Frankfurt and Rhine have both won it twice. They're both appearing in their fifth World Bowl. But who's going to move ahead in the standings right now? The smart money would be on the Galaxy. They're leading 25 to 6. They've pretty much had their way with things in the first half here against the Rhine Fire. But if the Fire can do something here in these last two minutes, they will get the ball first in the second half as well. So. I was thinking Luis Almanzar has been around this game long enough to know this one is not over yet. No, no, it's not, Nick. Not by a long shot. And if you recall, just as we ended the uh, before commercial break, as we came to the two-minute warning, Ryan had accepted a penalty, and it ended up being about a, well, it's like a 14-yard penalty for him. So it was a good choice on Pete's part. They're in good field position to do something here. So Grison continues under center for the Ryan fire. Two minutes to go here in the first half World Bowl 11 in and out of the hands of Kendall Newsom and that's that's a bad sign when your big play guy can't bring it in maybe your offense is in a bit of trouble uh, you know those, those are the things that you look for those little telltale signs that you have to overcome do players make plays they're not supposed to make or do players not make plays that they are supposed to make I know that sounds a little crazy but Kendall should have come up with that catch is it a perfect throw no but Kendall Newsom a guy of a player of his quality needs to make that play. I think that's what Mike Jones might have been suggesting on the sidelines as well. Second down and ten. Pressure comes. That ball was knocked down at the line of scrimmage and that's going to make it third down and ten. I think Big Buck Gurley is one of the real unsung heroes on this team. Well, the, thing, got a hand on that. The, the thing you start to see happening right now is you just close to look at the game. Frankfurt knows that Brian has to throw the ball. So now what's happening? The defensive linemen get into a little bit more of a sprinter stance. They tee off a little bit more. They're coming after Gr Grison pretty fast now. Third down and ten. And they are bogged down at the moment. All right, fire, bit of play action. Grison feels some heat, gets oh. it to Denson, and Denson just finds the sidelines and the first down marker with Fred Jones in hot pursuit. It was a desperation play, but it got the result they wanted. Yeah, he, he certainly did. He got he rid of it very, very well at that point in time. The uh, big, big play by Archie Denson, because he had a stretch to make that catch, and then he was smart enough to get to the point where he could get the first down. Scott Osborne, the right tackle, had a little bit of trouble that time with... Uh, Louis Lamanza, uh, uh, Al Almanzar, coming off the edge. Ground. Scotty's going to have to block a little bit better if they're going to throw the ball. They're going on the ground, and yeah. uh, Autry Denson uh, inside on the Frankfurt Galaxy equals no gain. Good move by Mike's part there to run the ball a little bit. You've got to slow down that front, plus you want to make sure you score with no time left in the first half. You don't want to give Frankfurt any more time. And there's some head scratching going on down there. Well, we talked earlier about Dwayne Painter being in a rhythm. That's what Mike Jones wants to find out. What can work? What's going to work? So Mike Jones and Chris Grison talking it over on one sideline. These guys probably thinking, ah, we got this one. We know what these guys are going to come up with. They've had a few plays offensively, the Ryan Fire, but nothing consistent. And, and, and that's the key. That's the thing that you look for from an offense. I use the term rhythm, consistency. It's the same type of thing. You've got to establish some things and just keep going to them. You don't need a ton of plays. You need two or three that will work for you to keep the opposition off balance. Second down and ten at the Frankfurt go, Galaxy 45-yard line for the Ryan Fire. Less than two minutes oh, remaining. The clock showing 134. Grison drops. No pressure. He's got a lot of time. He's got himself a man as well. Yeah, ni nice the protection Boyd. there. And again, we see the Ryan fire. No back situation. A little bit different than what a normal Pete Garchuk team is like. But we're inside two minutes of the first half. They've got to get some points. A couple of big plays here because they're really in four down territory. They've got this one and the next one, I would think. And they've got an empty backfield here as well with Todd Elstrom checking into the lineup as the fifth wide receiver. They go for Lavelle Boyd once again, I believe it was. It may have been Evan Johnson. Chris Pointer on the stop. Nice throw and nice catch. Now we got a minute, got a little bit under a minute to go here in the half. Ryan calls at least their second time out, I believe. Ryan Fire, second team timeout. Yep, second timeout. 
Well, one of the many problems this guy is facing is the fact that uh, the uh, quarterbacks are getting pressure time and time time, no matter who it is, both Grison and Rolovich felt some heat. Well, you know, one of the things that people always talk about is quarterbacks that pretty boy position. You don't need to be tough. Well, you watch some of these close-ups and watch those quarterbacks stand in there and get hit play after play after play. All right? If they don't call me, just stay to your smash side. Yeah. All right? All your check down, Chris. All right. M Mike's uh, telling Chris a couple of different options. He's going to throw something to one got side. He's going to throw a little smash to the Here other. And generally, it's based on coverage. Here we go. Let's go zero, 60 smash, next club on one on one, right? Yeah. Smash is a little hitch in a corner out to one side here. And if they're in three deep, they'll probably go to that side. They're, they're not, but he's got some soft corners. Watch him to throw the hitch one side or the other. The blitz was coming, but it was well picked up, and he's gone for the end zone, and it's bouncing around, and it's incomplete. Looking for Charlie Adams. Jeremy Unertl was there with the stop. And Unertl, the right far considered the weak link of this secondary, not there. But you, you know something, though, Nick? It's amazing as you watch Jeremy over the last... When you look at him physically on film, he say he can't move. He can't do this. But the one thing Jeremy has done over the last half of this season, he's made plays. Just like that, Ryan Fire thinks they can beat him, but if push comes to shove, they can't. Jeremy's there along with Chris Cummings. Chris Cummings played for us in Berlin three years ago. He's done a great job. He's played in this league for years, Chris Cummings. Second down, they go back on the ground. Autry Denson finds another couple of tough yards. Fred Jones was Dave, there. R Ryan is well under control here. They're calling a play at the line of scrimmage. They're very well aware of what the clock go, is. Cougar. Here we go. In some place along the line, they're going to kick a field goal. We're going to... Third down, big play coming up. They've got a man, Denson, who manages to get to the sidelines. Another first down for Frankfurt, so they've stopped the clock. A very smart move by Autry's part there. We get a completion, plus he gets out of bounds. We get to save that timeout, which if Ryan really wanted to, means they could run the ball on third down and call timeout and kick a field goal if they had to. But... Let's go, zero, 60, tackle, eight wheel. Here we go, here we go. All right, wheel means you're going to see a guy run a sideline and then up, the, then turn up. I believe it might be Charlie Adams over to our left with a sideline and up. First down at the 14-yard line. The fire trying to get on the board. Yeah, they've got the him. They've got him. There's the man. Oh, and it's incomplete. The, the amazing part with the wheel, they had Charlie Adams down the left sideline when he ran the sideline up. We talked a minute ago about making plays. Kendall Newson needed to come up with that catch because they need he needs to electrify the Ryan Fire offense. And was it an easy catch? No, but it's one of those ones that when you're gonna win, you've got to have it. Yeah. A they, tough catch, but would, would have been would have been difficult, and those are the catches you're not supposed to make, but yet you have to kind of make those to make it big plays in big games. The man who was drafted by Jacksonville last season. There's that empty backfield again. Five wide receivers in on second down for the fire. And he goes over the middle this time and uh, finds Charlie Adams for just six or seven before Rashidi Barnes makes the stop. And that is the last Ryan Fire timeout with 11 Ten seconds out. on the clock. Okay, Fire. now we're in an interesting situation. They have no timeouts left, 11 seconds. Do you throw one into the end zone to get the touchdown? You know, do you? Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, coach. Hey, coach. Right here now. Right here now. We're on the way. Ten. Stackles would have ran and we hadn't did anything with it. One of them I'm thinking is Joker. At least we're going to. You're right. You're right. There's a few people making a case down there. Well, it, what, what happens whenever you're a decision maker, you listen to a little bit of everything everybody tells you, and then you've got to make the decision based on the choices. Hey, let's go. Tell me how to beat up 50 flip screen right. Zero. No, 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 no. Give it to me! We're not going. Hey, hey, Chris. Uh, Bob Valacente on the other sideline, the defensive coordinator, a, a Super Bowl winner with the Green Bay Packers and a very shrewd coach indeed. And he's uh, looking reasonably calm in comparison. There was some confusion on that other sideline. It, it certainly seemed that Nick, as Chris went back to the huddle, it didn't look as though they had anything established as to what they wanted to do. It's important here he throws it, though. Very important. Third down. Big, big play. 
He's got some time, yeah, then he's flushed out. Good just job. has to I mean, it, throw it away. The, the key Buck point for us, could, couldn't take the sack. You take the sack, the half ends. Had to throw it away because there wasn't anybody open. Now they have an opportunity on fourth down to kick a field goal. And as you stated earlier, they kick a field goal here. They come back with a good drive. Those are the things positive that you can build on. And Pete is the kind of guy that will build on those in the locker room. He'll say, look, we finished the half with a good drive. You, oh, you don't get to the world ball. You're going to hear this and feel it. Yep. Almanzi doing it again. So here's Ingo Anderbrugger. Can he do it again? Yes, he can. So the German kicker doing his job. And the Ryan Fire settling for their third field goal of a half that's been dominated by the Frankfurt Galaxy. But Pete Kaharczyk has a lot of work to do on offense and defense. He knows it. But these Galaxy fans will know that it's not time to celebrate yet. It is only a 16-point ball game. That's two scores. The Ryan Fire will get their hands on the ball first in the second half as well. But I'll tell you what, they've got some rebuilding to do in that Fire locker room because they were second best in every phase of the game in that first half. They, they were, but the key part is they didn't have any breaks go in their favor. They gave some things away. The pass interference call, a couple of runs, the bad snap. More from Hamden in just a couple of moments. It's half time in World Bowl 11. We are at halftime here at Hamden Park in Glasgow, Scotland of World Bowl 11. And joining me in the Royal Box is the commissioner of the National Football League, Paul Tagliabue. And Paul, I guess you didn't get the memo here today. Well, the equipment man got me my kilt, but he didn't get me the rest of the equipment, so I'm going to have to put that off to the next game. I'll take all the abuse here today. Listen, Commissioner, back in March when they were in training camp in Tampa, all kinds of speculation about security issues. The Iraqi war had just begun. You made the decision to go forward. We are an American business doing business in Europe. How have things work so far? Well, I think what the owners decided then was exactly right. It seemed right then, and now it seems even righter because we've had tremendous support here in Europe, the shared values and sport between the U.S. and Europe and all of our cities, in Scotland, Amsterdam, Barcelona, and Germany have been great. The fans have been great, and we're here for an outstanding matchup, as you can see. Uh, you mentioned uh, a lot of countries right there, Commissioner. What about the future of the National Football League in the U.K. specifically? Well, we're uh, very pleased with where we are in the U.K. You know, we drifted a little bit uh, a few years back. We had started there with a great uh, excitement about the Cowboys and the Bears in the mid-'80s, but now we have uh, more live coverage there of our NFL games than ever. The team here, the Claymores, almost made it the championship game. We have great support here for today's game, so we're positive about the progress we're making. Commissioner, you're a sports fan, so certainly the success of Yao Ming in basketball, Ishiro in baseball, you, you watch the national players right now. I know it gets you excited. You're seeing development in all these different countries. Do you see a day when real players from Europe, from Japan, from Germany, from France become stars in the National Football League? I definitely see that. Uh, the most striking thing, and you and I discussed it earlier in the week at practice for me and Gene Upshaw here this week, has been the progress of the national players. Uh, Patrick Vensky and Daniel Benetka, just to take two out here today. Other players from France in this game today, Mexico and elsewhere. We saw them last year in the American Bowl game in Japan, uh, the Japanese players. We're making real progress, and that's maybe the most exciting thing that I see as we enter this second decade of this International League. Commissioner, as you get ready here for the second half today, uh, just the success of the league this year. I mean, have you enjoyed watching and, and finding out about the success of these players and then hearing about them uh, come Sunday in the, in the fall during our season? Well, it's been fun, and I know that in our league cities there's been a lot of excitement, Green Bay and elsewhere, where the quarterbacks over here have excelled. But uh, when you see players like we have in this game and the prospect that we'll be seeing them in the fall as NFL players, players from Europe, in addition to the Bakers and the others who are here from the Dolphins and other NFL teams, it gets to be real exciting, and it lets us know that we're about to kick off NFL football at home. Commissioner, thanks for joining us here. Thanks for coming across the pond. Enjoy the second half. The quarterback story has been a bit of an old story, really. The uh, Frankfurt Galaxy passes haven't completed too many passes. They haven't needed to. Frankfurt's guys have completed passes to seven different receivers, but never making any great penetration. Well, the thing that we talked about before, Nick, is you've got to come up with big plays. The thing that Ryan Fire missed an opportunity a couple times where they could have made some excellent catches and they didn't. They've got 139 yards. Pete's doing a good job of getting his team ready. This becomes a very important part here. 
for the Rhine Fire to receive this opening kickoff for the second half, and it gets some points. And they got to stop Frankfurt running the football. 127 yards on the ground for Frankfurt. They don't need to put the ball in the air if they can run that effectively. You're, you're ab ab absolutely correct. They don't need to throw it if they can continue to run that. The other amazing stat, though, is Frank, uh, Ryan had the ball about twice as many plays as what Frankfurt did. They got over 200 yards of offense as well, but didn't do anything much with it. Here's John Hilbert with the kickoff of the second half in World Bowl 11 into the sun is Autry Denson and how they need something to happen in this first drive good coverage the second Frank. half because the first half everything went the way of the Frankfurt Galaxy big, big, big run here Lewis. I think that's the first touchdown where Lewis goes in to score after the interference call uh, Quinn Gray makes a great throw and then Robert Gillespie has a great run for the three touchdowns there so three touchdowns for the Galaxy three field goals for the fire that's why we've got this scoreline of 25 to 9 even though statistically the uh, right fire have actually outgained them in terms of yardage now Nick Rolovich is back on the center the man who had the first quarter he's got a bit of time he's putting it upstairs for Charlie Adams and Adams can't quite bring that in. Calvin Pearson had the coverage. Calvin Pearson was there, and again, Nick Nick Rolovich just throws the ball a little too wide. Uh, Charlie Adams wasn't able to make an adjustment to catch it. Uh, Pete Harchuk said he'll go with the guy with the hot hand. It, it, it's tough to say who's got the hot hand when you look at those stats, really. Grice had more work, but Rolovich didn't do an awful lot wrong himself. If I were making that decision, Nick, I would do exactly what you just said. I would play both of them because that's what you've done all year, and nobody distinguished themselves in the first half. And how the fire needs someone to distinguish himself here in this second half. Can it be Denson who's looking to get outside? And that was a bit more effective for Denson. Seven yards before Idris Price brought him down. Because uh, Denson got nothing going up the middle. Maybe they'll try and spin him and bounce him outside off the tackles. The play that I just saw where they down block with the tight end and they pull the right guard around. It's a trademark play of the Ryan Fire. And I'm not sure we had seen that play yet in the first half. It was the most un Ryan Fire like first half, wasn't it? Everything happening through the air for him. Although well, Frank Moreau did have three or four good runs. Third down and a couple. Can they convert? Rolovich has got time and he's got his man as Todd, well. So Todd, Todd, Todd Elster makes a nice, nice adjustment there. And uh, Nick throws the ball behind him a little. Todd's able to get his shoulder square, come back and make that catch. Big first down for the Ryan Fire. They certainly needed that. This first drive so important not only in terms of the scoreboard but also in terms of the morale of the fire. If they can put something on the on the board here, they can believe, and that's what Pete Harchek we're hearing was saying to the guys in the locker room at half time. You've got to believe in yourself still. This self-belief so important. There he is going up the middle again, Denson, picking up four more yards. Because if you lose that self-belief, you've lost the game. One of the biggest things in that's happened in athletics, and I think it came from the Olympics over the last 20 years, is visualization. Being able to see yourself being successful. If if what we just see the graphic we just see on the video there Frank Moreau is out that could hurt him but you know what Audrey Denson's a pretty good football player so I don't think it'll kill the Ryan fire well Denson has got to step it up there is no Frank Moreau in this second half looking at the ice pack on that ankle play action from Rolovich and he's got Dwayne Blakely and Blakely getting involved for the first time in the ball game and just bouncing off tackles as well one of the other big tight end Rashidi Barnes on the stop and, and, th and that again is that little rhythm play they fake the run they come around a little naked play to the tight end uh, Blakely does a nice job of catching it and then breaking a tackle or two and now they put the ball on the Frankfurt side of the field here you'll see a little play action fake uh, Rolovich turns around, dumps it off to the tight end who faked the block, and Blakely rambles for a few yards after that. Good for 23 yards, and the man from the Kansas City Chiefs is a big load. He's 6'4", 260, not as big as Mustard, who's 6'6", six, six and 290. There are two, and lots of movement at the line of scrimmage there. Two really big tight ends, that ball bouncing around, but it's all coming back anyway. It was more a case of who didn't move at the line of we'll, scrimmage. We'll, 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 we'll have to wait to see what the official, where we are right now, you can't hear. But again, I would guess that they've used a long count. They've staggered their count. Uh, Nick Rolovich is doing a good Outside, job. number 98 on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Yep, Buck Gurley caught. And now you're into a situation where Ryan can establish a little bit more rhythm. You got first and five. You can run it three times in a row and in all likelihood get a first down. Plus, they're now inside the 35-yard line. 
This guy goes back to Tampa Bay when his season finishes here. What a tough place to try and get a job on a defensive line, huh? <laughs> it, sure, it certainly is, but as we've mentioned before, you're really trying out for all 32 teams here. You're trying to impress somebody. Right now, none of these players thinking of impressing anybody in the NFL. It's all about winning that World Bowl. First down and five. Denson trying to get something going inside. Doesn't get anything. No gain on the plate. Devon Finn, the defensive end, coming up with the stop. Not only was Devon Finn there with a great stop, but Frankfurt rotated their safety up to get an extra guy right at the point of attack, and that made it very difficult for Denson to find any running room. As good as, as, good as these defensive linemen are, the run support from the linebackers is terrific. Oh, without it, without it, out of doubt. Here you'll see the safety come up, I believe, and come off the edge and be a part of it. Yeah, safety support helps as well. <laughs> no game. Second down. They didn't bring the safety this time. They're expecting the pass. That's what they get as well. Not much going on there for Kendall Newsom. They've kept this man very contained. He's their big play guy, and he's never been able to break free. But what they're forcing the uh, Frankfurt Galaxy to do is come up and make a tackle. If that, if Jerry Yonertl misses that tackle, it could be a big play. But it's a catch. It's a first down. The chains move. Good catch by Kendall Newsom. Well, I know we're looking ahead a bit here, Peter, but a Ryan Fire touchdown changes the perspective of this game enormously. It's a very important drive, this, for both these teams. The Fire, obviously, they've got to get the touchdown. The Galaxy can hold them off. It changes the picture again. Rolovich looking to go over the middle. He's got his man. Newsom this time in heavy traffic, holding on inside the 10. Rashidi Barnes with the tackle. One of the things that has happened just through this drive is Ryan has regained that confidence that you were talking about coming out of the locker room. The vision that Pete talked about, believing in yourselves. Now they've got the ball first down inside the 10-yard line. Do they need a touchdown? That would be fantastic. But they absolutely need points. I, I'd expect to see them be a little bit aggressive throwing the ball here, trying to get it. But at the same point in time, don't be surprised if you see a draw to run it in, especially here on first down. First and goal at the eight. There is that draw. Denson looking to try and go inside. You've done this coaching thing before, haven't you? <laughs> well, you can tell. You spread them out a little bit, and you get a chance to pop it through. They'd run the draw earlier in the day, and it, it had been a big game. So now they'll, they will didn't want to score, but they want to be intelligent when they score, too. Now you've got second down and goal on the seven. What does Mike Jones do here? I wouldn't be surprised to see Mike roll out one way or the other at some point in time. Whether it's this one or not, I don't know. Four wides, probably not. Second half on the six. Rolovic has some time looking, trying to float it in there, and it's just hit out of the goal line by Jeremy Unertl. I think Lavelle Boyd thought he was in the end zone. Unertl coming up and saving a touchdown. Again, we talked earlier about big plays. Big plays aren't necessarily long gainers. Jeremy comes up there and makes a nice hit to keep the ball out of the end zone. Uh, Boyd here makes the catch, put your shoulder down, and you got to take that defensive back into the end zone. But Yonertl comes up with a great hit, keeps him out. They're forcing Ryan to go for it here on third down. At the one, do they have the back to get in? No, they don't. Right on the goal line. Just short was it, Audrey Denson. That's it, where they missed it, Frank Moreau. Here is a very, very interesting decision right now. Do you come away with the field goal, or do you go for it with a touchdown? You've run the ball twice, you haven't been able to get it in, you threw it. Very interesting decision here right now. Fourth and goal, and the ball is inches away from that goal line. With, a, with, all, the I, with all the movement I'm not seeing, it certainly looks as though Peter's decided to go for it. Well, he's rolled the dice. Sneak. He's rolled the dice, Kaharchek. Fourth and goal, and they've lost the football! What a disaster! Doesn't matter. Total, total offensive breakdown. One of the things that we had talked about earlier, Nick, is don't beat yourself. What is going on with the Ryan Fire? They can't buy a break at the moment. It's a lovely city, Glasgow. Cultural city, a city of architecture. This is Buchanan Street. It's nice for you to spend some time here in Glasgow as well, Pete. Normally you're in, you do your coaching, you get out. It's, uh, it's, it's a city that's got a lot to offer, hasn't it? it? It has, Nick. And, you know, I haven't gotten out too much, but I do get out to jog, and I've jogged the streets. I've probably been on Buchanan Street. Does that look very familiar? I'm sure you have. Nick Rolovich is uh, going to be talking upstairs to Scott Milanovic, the quarterback's coach here. And uh, this is one of those moments where you think to yourself, 
this World Bowl is destined not to be ours. I mean, fourth and goal at the goal line, and they lose the football. Well, you know, and it's a thing you talk about. You have before you can win, you can, you got to prevent from losing. You can't beat yourself. So the Frankfurt Galaxy start inside their own one yard line. James Brown has come back into the ball game for them. And Brown with a nice safe throw to Mark Lester that picks up seven yards before he's pushed out by Teddy Gaines. And it was interesting, I was watching Pete Gaharshek on the sideline when he lost that fumble, his head dropped, and then he just picked himself back up again. It's as if to say, well, I can't show that I'm, I'm suffering. You, you hit the nail on the head, Nick. You've got to take a negative and turn it into a positive. If the Ryan Fire defense can stop him here, they'll get the ball big, at good field position. By the way, just in front of us, Buck Gurley has gone into the locker room. Left, left, the Frankfurt left. Galaxy left, defensive right, end, so we'll try and get a report on him if we can. That could be big. Second down and four on the ground, Jonas Lewis, who had 89 yards in the first half. And you can give him another five there. Tony Lukin is coming up from corner and making the stop, but it's first down Frankfurt. And it was a big first down for Frankfurt, too. We just got through saying before that play how important this series would be for the Ryan defense to keep him pinned back. When Frankfurt's had the ball during the course of the day, they have been able to run it very, very well. You're going to have to start seeing some more safety fill from the uh, Ryan Fire safeties. So first down, the Galaxy with Robert Gillespie, who scored on that long touchdown run. He's going on another long run here. Greg Brown eventually arresting his progress at the 31-yard line. Well, it's another 14-yard game for the Galaxy, who really have dominated on the ground, and that is so uncharacteristic of the Ryan Fire to be beaten up on the ground physically. It, it, it's very uncharacteristic of us, and, and obviously the, the injury to the inside people has hurt them. And Gillespie showing some good footwork there, just bouncing out. He has some nice vision, Nick. So first down for Frankfurt. And look who's going right up the middle again. Robert Gillespie, another huge run from the man from the Washington Redskins. He's into Ryan Fire territory all the way to the 40-yard line. You can make that another 30-yard touchdown, uh, another run. And Gillespie is running riot. And, and, and most of the things that are taking place, Nick, are taking place up the middle. Is this where they're really missing the middle linebacker position? You, you just noticed there when they ran the ball, Terrence Dukes get blocked at the point of attack there. And, you know, it, it's got to be difficult for him playing in that area where you have people coming at you from both sides as opposed to being on the outside. And Corey McIntyre leading the way. They don't give him any touches, but he's a terrific blocker, a converted defensive player. Mark Lester with the catch and staying in bounds as well before they swarmed all over him. But... Uh, He's mixing it up so well, Dwayne Painter. It's a run, run, run. Then they'll hit you with the pass. And, and it's not just pass. It's play action pass. They get you think and run. They show you run. And then they throw the ball over the top. It's a nice throw by James Brown and a real nice catch by Mark Lester. I like Corey McIntyre. He's just had four touches of the football all year long. But he's such a key component for this Frankfurt Galaxy offense. And he's playing hurt as well. He's got a bone spur in his heel. They weren't sure if he could go or not. But he's healthy. Somebody went early there. Charles Burton, they still make the uh, play, and it's an eight-yard completion, but we'll have to check out that flag. Certainly Charles Burton was over the line of scrimmage, number 51, before that ball was snapped. Yes, he was, and it basically gave Frankfurt a free play. I would anticipate they would accept the play to make it second and two, but we'll listen for the call. A drive, remember, that started at their own one-yard line. That's exactly right. They've done a nice job here moving the ball out. Very nice. Defense, number 51 offside. The penalty is declined. Yes, they do down. indeed decline it. There's Dwayne Painter sending in the next play. But the man assessed. But they've got here in no time at all, Pete. It's not like it's been a long grinding drive. They've, suddenly they were out of trouble and suddenly they were over halfway. And here they are suddenly knocking on the door again. You know, you're right, Nick, but as a matter of fact, though, when you look at the clock, right there are only five minutes left in the third period. Yeah. And, and the, the thing that's happened, those points that you already have become more and more important with less time left. A timeout has been taken on the field. The Ryan Fire are reeling at the moment. Welcome back to Hamden Park in Glasgow. World Bowl 11, the Frankfurt Galaxy dominating the Ryan Fire at the moment, 25 to 9, and looking for more. And this Fire defense being beaten up, pushed around. 
A drive that started in Frankfurt's own one-yard line, just inside the one-yard line. They've got it all the way to the fire, 15. The fire need a stand, a turnover, something. But they look a team almost on its knees. But you're, you're right, Nick. The, uh, Ryan Fire does need a big stand here, but it's really in an area of the field where the Ryan Fire historically has, has excelled. And again this year, they've been a very stingy defense in the red zone. They're faced with a second down and three situation. They need to come up with a couple of plays and at the bare minimum, force the Frankfurt Galaxy to kick a field goal. Well, Pika Harcek was telling his guys in the locker room, believe, you have to be believed, you have to believe. But I'll tell you what, if the Galaxy score here, Self-belief is going to be in short supply on that fire sideline. Second down, and it's Adam Tate getting a carry for the first time in the ball game. And Tate picks up another seven yards. Marvin Coley, who was uh, one of the new guys that came in from Barcelona this week on the stop. And this is the problem they've got. They can keep their running backs fresh. Now we're seeing Tate. Right, and Tate hasn't played much all year long, but right there he comes up with a nice seven-yard gain. And uh, it was just what we talked about a second ago where Ryan Fire needed to come up with a stop. They certainly do now. You've got the ball first down and goal inside the 10-yard line. They need to come up big here. First and goal at the eight. The Galaxy, led by James Brown, give it to Tate again. Tate falls forward to the five-yard line before he is stopped. That's you know, bring up second and goal. That was more characteristic of the Ryan Fire defense as I've always known. Again, five or six people around the ball carrier making the tackle. They only relinquished two yards. Now they're fit space with a second and goal situation from the five. Look, look for Frankfurt, some kind of play action here, some kind of bootleg. I'd anticipate they try to go for the jugular and get a score here, and usually you do it on second down. I'm sure they would. And the dangerous Robert Baker, who, of whom we've heard little in the ball game, is what lined up wide left. That's where they're going. Looking for Baker, and it's incomplete. Teddy Gaines was draped all over him and may have been so illegally. This, this will be very interesting to see which one. This, this call could go either way, to be perfectly honest with you. I thought Baker was trying to push to get the football. Well, what's the official's interpretation? Pass interference, number 30 on the defense. Foul was in the end zone. Ball boy plays on the one-yard line. First down. One of the things that we've said earlier in the game, when things go against you, they tend to go against your numbers. There's a call that could go either way, and it goes against the Ryan Fire. Well, they've had every bad break yeah, possible. They, I mean, they? there's, all, there's all kinds of pushing and holding on there. Could have been a no call, could have been offense, could have been defense. Instead, it's first and goal at the one. Brown gives it to Tate. Tate is not back. No, Brown's got it on the keeper, and then hesitated, then loses his helmet. Oh, we had a bit of everything. A great fake from Tate. And then Brown got it, looked like he was going to go in, hesitated, they got him, he lost his helmet, second down. The operative word there was hesitation. I thought he could have thrown it, I thought he could have run it, but he hesitated. At that split second, gave the Ryan Fire pursuit a chance to get around him, and now they're faced with a second and goal situation from the one. I mean, Jamel Smith hit his helmet off, but uh, boy did they get him. Greg Brown was in there. That suggests that the Ryan Fire's defense has given up. Second and goal. Here they go again with Tate, and Tate this time, does he get in? Yes! Uh, Touchdown Frankfurt. On the sideline call. Side call. I, I would anticipate a Pete Karacek team won't give up. They'll, they'll fight hard, their offense will go and make some plays, their defense will keep struggling. They're looking for something magical to happen at this point. Yet another touchdown. Corey McIntyre with a crunching lead block. Adam Tate going in behind him. And Ralph Kleinman 44, 44. with a point to make it a 32 to 9 ball game with three minutes left here in the third quarter. And there it is, the veteran German playing in his fifth World Bowl. That's a record. Looks like he's on his way to his third World Bowl ring. You know, Graver knows that is now within sight. 32 to 9, the Galaxy over the Rhine Fire. This one going very much according to the script. The preseason or the pregame experts said the Galaxy looked stronger offensively, looked vastly superior defensively. That is the way this thing is shaping up so far, with three minutes to go here in the third quarter. So 32 to 9. We'll be back with more action from Hamburg, uh, Hamden, excuse me, in just a couple of moments. Winning the Super Bowl is a dream come true. There's been 37 champions. A quarterback, there's only been 23 quarterbacks that have won it. It's incredible just to be in the NFL, but not alone being that elite class and uh, being a Super Bowl champion. 
that's what you work for in your career, and uh, only a few get to ever get that chance to say that they're a Super Bowl champion. And I'm sure back in 1995, when he was struggling away with the London Monarchs, Brad Johnson never dreamed that he would be a Super Bowl winning quarterback. And that, of course, happened earlier this year for him. Couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. Just another one of those graduates from NFL Europe, Pete, that have gone on and uh, made a little bit of a name for themselves he, he, he's, in the he's, NFL. He has done very well, Nick, and I know it, you know, I'm, I'm assuming by the time he ages a few more, he'll look back at the experience that he had in London as probably a difference maker in his career. Um, he says that already. I mean, he said he really had to learn to stand on his own two yep. feet, make things happen for himself, and believe in himself. There's that word belief again. And can the fire still believe they can do this? Here's Matt Stanley looking to turn the corner, and... Uh, Stanley needed two, picked up seven. Quarterbacks, of course, have come out of this league in bunches, 26 of them now, but defensive line and offensive line have produced the most. I'm not surprised at how many receivers and tight ends have come out. I can't think of too many off the top of my head, but it really has been a conveyor belt of talent at all positions over the years now, NFL Europe. It, it has, Nick, and just on a personal note, it gives me a thrill to watch games on Sundays and see names and faces that I know. Yep, guys you coached. Guys, that broke your height again. <laughs> that was a heartbreaker of a, a throw right there from Nick Rolovich, looking in the general direction of Charlie Adams, but that never had a chance. I will generalize here to you as we talk about the NFL Europe League as a, uh, a place that develops players and gives players opportunities. I don't know the exact number, but if there are 120 officials in the National Football League, 110 of them have come through NFL Europe. Absolutely right. And how many of those have you shouted at over the years? All of them. Did I say 110? <laughs> <laughs> Only during the game, though, Nick. <laughs> Second down. Stanley looking to work it inside. We'll pick up another three. That's going to bring up a third down. Yeah, you, yeah. once the game's over, you have to let that stuff go, don't you? You can't sort of... Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. But at the same point in time, when that game's being played, it's the, in the intense 60 minutes for you. Look at that stat on the right hand side there 192 rushing yards through three quarters for the frankfurt galaxy i never ever thought i'd see a pico harcheck team gashed like that my math isn't very good but as i add it up there i see about 280 for frankfurt and around 350 or 340 for the ryan fire it just goes to prove that mistakes will kill you there's rolovich getting a man again just shy of first down yardage chris cummings Pushing his man out of bounds. Nowhere for Charlie Adams to go. He ran out of real estate. One of the things that defenses aren't afraid to do is let you complete the ball in front of them, come up and make a play. Chris Cummings just did that, forced the Ryan fire into another decision. It's fourth down and two on yeah, the 12 yard line. And this is what happened last time they went for fourth down. Jeremy Udertle saving the touchdown. Then Autry Denson getting stopped at the goal line. And then the football coming loose. Disaster for the Ryan fire. What will Pete Kaharchek do this time? He's got to go for it, of course. Has to go for it. And it's a long one as well from yeah. where they've spotted that ball. Yep. Looks like oh, I thought Franklin was going to come after him. They didn't. Flags everywhere. With the flag being thrown then, what do we got? We have a delay game? Yep. Offense, five yard penalty. Still. What, what else can go wrong for the fire this evening? It's incredible. It, it is incredible, but at the same point in time, you're dealing with professional athletes that are going to want to compete. They want, they're going to want to score. They're going to want to make this a game right till the end. As bleak a picture as it may be right now, they'll still compete. But from fourth and a long one, they've now got themselves a real headache. Got to try and keep this thing alive. Get it inside the 10-yard line. That's what they've got to aim at. Well, they're aiming for the end zone. Oh, oh yeah. Kendall Newsom was just dragged down by Chris Pointer, and I think we could have thrown that flag from up here. You're exactly right, Nick. And now, and who knows, you know, stranger things have happened, but a break finally went in the Ryan Fires' yeah. way. You know, they had a chance to throw the ball deep. They took that. It can be... Number 29 we'll wait for the first. defense. Automatic, first down. Well, they called it on Chris Cummings, but the bottom line is first down. E exactly right. It's a first down inside the five-yard line. Gives the Ryan Fire a little bit of a break here, and they, they need to come away with a touchdown. They've got four shots at it from inside the five. Well, here it is. And there it is, and it's Chris Pointer, indeed, number 35, who should have had the flag. But the bottom line is it's a correct call, and I think even if you'd been the coach and that would have been called against you, you might have kept quiet on that one. I don't know if I've ever kept quiet on the call. No comment, that says it all. Here's Matt Stanley 
trying to make a comment of his own and he gets it to the three yard line Rashidi Barnes on the stop. The, the one thing I haven't seen uh, the Ryan Fire do out of their flush formation is get some kind of uh, play action bootleg. I, I, I couldn't hear what Mike was saying there. Three step, three step pass, which is probably the right thing to do with the pressure that Frankfurt will give you here, even with their front four. It's almost a metaphor for the Ryan Fire offense. It's, it's tough to hear what they're trying to do. Rolovic looking for something and it's picked off and it's Chris Pointer. And it just gets worse and worse and worse for the Ryan Fire. And, and those are the things where you have to have some experience as far as Nick is concerned. At this point in time, Nick never should have thrown that ball. He looked that side, uh, the guy's double covered, and bang, he's either going to throw it away or get himself back to the left. And how so ironic there was that it's the guy, coverage. The guy that drew through. the flag comes up with the turnover it's frankfurt all the way the end zone the galaxy replied with this 34 yard ralph prime and field goal to make it 35 now we'll pick it up at the top of ryan's following drive frankfurt galaxy fans enjoying their experience here in scotland the last time they were in scotland for a world bowl they were on the losing end not today there's still a few fire fans in there cheering and yelling and uh making themselves heard but uh, their cause is a hopeless one they know it but they're well, still going to enjoy the day well, one of the things about the NFL Europe games and the experience over here the thing called the power party and it really is that it's a power it's a party that starts with a lot of power before the games and it gets just, just continues through the game and then even after the game yeah I, I remember my first year as a head coach in Berlin our season was over I had a chance to go to Dusseldorf and watch uh, the Ryan Fire play Amsterdam Admirals. When the game is over, as I'm walking out of the parking lot at 11 o'clock at night, there's a guy with a backpack on still selling beer. <laughs> People are having a great time. And I'm sure these folks will party the night away here in Glasgow. I'm sure they will. It'll be a wild one tonight. It'll be a wild one in the Frankfurt Hotel. Nobody staying in that hotel is going to get much sleep tonight. Guess where I'm staying? The Frankfurt Wait, Hotel. Is that where you're staying? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm down the street at the Marriott and. Yeah. Fortunately or unfortunately, I catch a, an early, early, early flight tomorrow morning. Bob Valicenti can add a World Bowl ring to that Super Bowl ring. Audrey Denson is dancing his way through for 15 yards, but uh, they've run the changes, Frankfurt, defensively. They've got Dennis Engelbrecht playing uh, defensive nose tackle, a, a rookie German player who's a software engineer by trade. You, you get a chance to see a guy with orange boots that's him <laughs> and Dennis Let's I don't think has played much this season obviously this is a developmental league and it's a developmental league for these players as well but uh, clearly Valicenti thinks well I might as well give my guys a, a chance to play in the World Bowl that's a memory that he'll always remember yeah, yes it is and, and that's a big part of what this league is all about is giving people opportunity to show what they can do so pe players need to play and if you're wondering about that graphic about Scott Cooper there as well Scott is uh, doing sideline reporting for the Fox Network in the United States this evening, the uh, very popular Scottish wide receiver with the Claymores. And uh, as you've known to your cost a few times, Peter, a guy who can make some pretty good catches as well. It, absolutely. Not, not only is he very popular, but he was a very good wide receiver for him. In fact, you talked about retirement uh, with Ralph Kleiman. Scott was out for a year. Right. Did an awful lot with youth go, development here football here in Scotland. He's gained himself a great reputation go, in developing real, real. the game. Second down for the fire. Bryson looking for an open man, and uh, Kendall Newson takes that one on the hop. Rashidi Barnes was there to cover him up. Rashidi Barnes, by the way, was voted the defensive player of the year in NFL Europe by the coaches. Was uh, Rashidi the recipient of your vote as well, Peter? Uh, you know something? I really think we voted for the linebacker from Barcelona, Dwayne Levels. I right. thought he was oh, a yeah, very impressive too, football yeah. player. Yeah. But all four safeties here are good football players today, all four that we saw. Bryson going to work once again and finding Lavelle Boy who falls forward and uh, it's the Turkish linebacker Tune Topku making the tackle there. Uh, you have to admire Doug Graber at this opportunity. He's getting everybody in the game. His players are getting excited. It's been a long time since the first of March when we were in Tampa, Florida, and this is what everybody plays for. And here's Grison on first and goal, putting hey, it up hey. into the end zone. Lavelle Boyd can't get it. Chris Cummings fell down. Boyd wants a flag. The official looked at him and said, no way. At this point in time, you want anything you can get. You know, they want yeah. to get another few points on the board. 
you know, just com com continue to compete as the day goes along. Dennis Engelbrecht is still in there with those hideous boots. Doug Graver's got to have a word to him about that. There is Big Dennis wearing the most disgusting boots I've ever seen on a football field. And Top Chu, the Turkish linebacker, is out there. Great that these guys are getting some experience. Here goes Autry Denson. Okay, we're done. Denson's been in the league with Miami a couple of years. Has he got a shot of getting back in with Detroit? You know, for a lot of these players, Nick, it's a question of ending up at the right place at the right time. Whether it's Detroit or someplace else, Autry has shown that he can play. He can play at a high level. So he has a chance someplace in the, in the National Football League. That is the two-minute warning. Two minutes left Please in the 2003 NFL season. Europe season. It's flown by. It all started, as Peter said, in March the 1st in Tampa. It's reached its conclusion here in Hamburg. Two minutes left at World Bowl 11. Is where the cultured and sophisticated people hang out in Glasgow. These guys aren't too cultured or sophisticated, but Bob Valacente is about to get it from Daniel Bonetka and Luis Almanzar. A World Bowl ring, a Super Bowl ring, and a shower. I want to tell you something, Nick. It's been a nice warm day here in Glasgow, <laughs> but that water's still cold, and it's a shock to your system. Thing is, when you get it, it means good things have happened That's for you. Exactly so you've got right. to take it with a smile. A big time smile. One of the most pleasurable smiles you'll ever have. Valacenti's defense has really put a smile on his face today. His third and goal. Bryson trying to put a bit of pride back for the Ryan fire. And he'll do just that to Dwayne Blakely. Yeah. Dwayne made a nice catch there, did a nice job to get himself open, made a nice catch. Well, these Ryan Fire fans have had a long, long wait to cheer about something here in World Bowl 11, and with 1 minute 55 left, they've finally got a touchdown. Yeah, it was a long time in coming, there's no doubt about that, Nick, but at least they did finally put one in, give themselves a little bit of satisfaction before it's all over. So Ingo and the Brugger will attempt to Four, add the extra point. That guy's really improved when he, when he started out in Tampa. He looked like he was going to be all over the place, but he's worked hard, he's learned fast, and he looks like one for the next few years as well. Dwayne Blakely of the Chiefs has put the Ryan Fire back in it a little bit in terms of their pride. Presentation of World Bowl 11 and John Beek, the vice president of football operations for the NFL, and one of the great supporters of NFL Europe down the years, is the man that's going to hand over the World Bowl to Doug Graber and the Frankfurt Galaxy. Peter Vars is with me. Peter, this was you a year ago. You know how good that feels. Nick, it's a tremendous feeling. You know, it's a feeling of exaltation for winning it. It's also a feeling for Doug of relief in the sense that. You know, as a head coach of a football team, you feel an awful lot of responsibility to an awful lot of people. Your players, your coaches, your, your coaches' wives, your players' wives, your front and office. Wonderful scenes here at Hamden Park in Glasgow, which has staged World Bowl XI magnificently. It wasn't the home victory that so many of the fans that came along wanted, but there's no question that the Frankfurt Galaxy are worthy winners of their third World Bowl. And right now, in NFL Europe terms, it does not get any better than this for Doug Graber, his coaching staff and his players that have worked so hard since camp opened on the 1st of March in Tampa, Florida. And it all ends here on the 14th of June at Hampton Park in Glasgow. Gillespie, he scored a touchdown. And every 
everybody a part of this. And most of the fans have stayed to enjoy the, the fireworks and the, the razzmatazz. It always signals the culmination of another season of play here in Europe. I'm sure the fans will be staying here and staying downtown for many hours to come, Nick. As, uh, as I was saying earlier, Doug Graber deserves an awful lot of credit. A year ago, they started off 4-0 and, and didn't get there. This year, they started off 3-0, and lost a few games, took an awful lot of strength on Doug's part to hold that team together. My hat's off to him. Congratulations uh, to the Frankfurt uh, Galaxy and their whole organization. Absolutely. Amazing. There were some people in Frankfurt, sections of the Frankfurt media were calling for his head a year ago. I don't think they are anymore. He's a World Bowl champion. Generally in the coaching business or in the athletic world, you're as good as your last time at bat. Yep. Doug's, <laughs> la Doug's last time at bat was a pretty good one. It certainly was. And now we just wait for John Beek to begin the formalities and then the celebrations can really begin in earnest. Congratulations! Doug Graber, all the players, the entire organization, coaches, Tillman, everybody who worked so hard to bring this championship to World Bowl 11. Doug Graber, congratulations from all of us at the NFL and NFL Europe. It's a good accomplishment. I know you've worked hard, and it's been a journey. Enjoy it. Congratulations to each and every one of you. What an accomplishment. Thank you, John. I tell you, this is a great honor for myself and this whole football team. And they want this because they're just a, they're a team. They worked hard. They got better every single week. And I tell you, I've heard all the coaches that we're going to miss this team. I'm really, really sad to see this season end. Congratulations. That's what they wanted to hear. They are World Bowl champions. 